My gracious sovereign. Even I have. Thus I, by thy advice and thy assistance, Wear these honors for a day, or shall they last? And we rejoice in them. Still live they, and forever may they last. Oh, Buckingham, now do I play the touch to drive thou be current gold indeed. Young Edward lives. <laughs> Think now what I would say. Say on, my gracious sovereign. Why, Buckingham, I say I would be king. Why, so you are, my thrice renowned liege. Ah, am I king? Is so, but Edward lives. True. Noble prince. Oh, bitter consequence that Edward still should live. True. Noble prince. Come in. Thou wert not going to be so dull. Shall I be plain? I wish the bastard dead, and I would have it suddenly performed. What sayst thou? Speak suddenly, be brief. Your grace may do your pleasure. Tut, tut, thou art all ice. Thy kindness freezeth. Say, have I thy consent that they shall die? Give me some breath, some little pause, my lord, before I positively speak therein. I will resolve your grace immediately. Bites his lip. I will converse with iron witted fools and unrespective boys. None for me that look into me with considerate eyes. <laughs> High reaching Buckingham grows circumspect. Ratcliffe, my lord. Knowst thou not any whom corrupting gold would tempt unto a close exploit of death? My lord. I know a discontented gentleman whose humble means match not his haughty mind. What is his name? His name, my lord, is Tyrrell. Mm, I partly know the man. Go call him hither presently. Deep revolving, witty Buckingham. He so long held out with me untired and stops he now for breath. Well, be it so. Lord, I hear the Bishop of Ely is fled to Richmond, where he abides beyond the sea. Why so? Come hither, case me. My lord. My wife is sick, and her physicians tell me she'll not live long. That is ill news, my lord. Good news, good case me. Though it was my hope in marrying her to knit my house with Lancaster, since she is barren, she can serve no purpose. Then rumour it abroad she's like to die. I will take order for her keeping close and for supplying her place. Well, look how thou dreamst, I say again, give out she's like to die. <sighs> what is you from this maze? It boots me much the world should take me for true heir of York. Therefore I must contract another marriage and stop all hopes whose growth may damage me. Or else my kingdom stands on brittle glass. Whom should I wed then but Elizabeth? My brother Edward's daughter. There's my way. Murder her brothers and then marry her. Uncertain way of gain. But I am in so far in blood that sin will pluck on sin. A falling pity dwells not in this eye. Is thy name Tyrrell? James Tyrrell, and your most obedient subject. Art thou indeed? Prove me, my gracious sovereign. Dares thou resolve to kill a friend of mine? Aye, my lord, but I had rather kill two enemies. Why, then thou hast it. Two deep enemies, foes to my rest, and my sweet sleeps disturbs. Tyrrell, I mean those bastards in the tower. Let me have open means to come to them, and soon I'll rid you from the fear of them. Mm. That sings sweet music, Tyrrell. Say it is done, and I will love thee and prefer thee too. It is done, my gracious lord. 
Shall we hear from thee till there we sleep? You shall, my lord. I will dispatch it straight. My lord, I have considered in my mind the late demand that you did sound me in. Well, let that pass. Ely is fled to Richmond. I hear that news, my lord. Darby! He's your wife's son. Well, look to it. My lord, I claim your gift, my due by promise, for which your honor and your faith is pawned, the earldom of Hereford and the movables of which you promised that I should possess. Darby, look to your wife. If she convey letters to Richmond, you shall answer it. What says your highness to my just demand? I remember Henry VI to prophesy that Richmond should be king. And Richmond was a little peevish boy. A king. Perhaps. My lord. How may I reach him? My lord, your promise for the earldom. Richmond. My lord. Aye. Towards o'clock. I am thus bold to put your grace in mind of what you promised me. Mm, well, but what's o'clock? Upon the stroke of ten. Well, let it strike. Why let it strike? Because that like a jack thou keeps the stroke betwixt thy begging and my meditation. I'm not in the giving vein today. Well, then, resolve me whether you will or no. Tuck, tuck. Thou troublest me. I'm not in the vein. Hey! Is it even so? Rewards ye my true service with such deep contempt. Made I him king for this. Now oh, let me think on Hastings and be gone to Brecknock while my fearful head is on. Tyrannous and bloody deed is done. The most arch act of piteous massacre that ever yet this land was guilty of. Titan and Forest, whom I did suborn to do this ruthless piece of butchery, although they were fleshed villains, bloody dogs, melting with tenderness and mild compassion, wept like two children in their death's sad stories. Lo, Thus quoth Titan, lay those tender babes. Thus, thus quoth Forrest, girdling one another within their innocent alabaster arms. Their lips were four red roses on a stalk, which in their summer beauty kissed each other. A book of prayers on their pillow lay, which once quoth Forrest, almost changed my mind. But on the devil, there the villain stopped. Whilst the Titan thus told on, we smothered the most replenished sweet work of nature that from the prime creation ere she framed. Us both are gone with conscience and remorse. They could not speak. And so I left them both to bring this tidings to the bloody king. Kind Tyrrell. Am I happy in my news? If to have done the thing you gave in charge beget your happiness, be happy then, my lord, for it is done. But didst thou see them, dead? I did, my lord. The chaplain of the tower hath buried them. Come to me, Tyrrell, soon, at after supper, and thou shalt tell the process of their death. Farewell till soon. The sons of Edward sleep in Abram's bosom, and Anne, my wife, hath bid the world good night. Now, for I know the Breton Richmond aims at young Elizabeth, my brother Edward's daughter, and by that knot looks to usurp my crown. To her I go, her jolly, thriving wooer 